Laura Jean Truman, welcome to the Love, Rinse, Repeat 50th episode, Seven Words from the Cross special. Thank you so much for having me, Liam. It's such a delight to be here. Oh, it's great to have you on. Uh, well, let's, let's read our words and we'll get into it. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding Jesus and saying, are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him saying, do you not fear God? since you are under the same sentence of condemnation. And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. So Laura, what do you hear in these words? Um. Well, when I was first meditating on this passage, I actually was struck a lot more um, by the words of the thief on the cross than even by Christ's words in response. I didn't read the assignment very carefully. Um, no, but, but um, <laughs> thinking about how often, you know, as I'm thinking about, been thinking about repentance during the Lenten season and the things that, that stop us from repenting, the things that harden us um, and the fears that we bring and the ways that we feel like we need to protect our sins from being seen um, because a sense that if we're seen as bad, we will be destroyed in some way or we will be lost. Um, and the need to make excuses about our sins um, because there is, I mean, that's how sin works. Like there's always an excuse, right? And, and that's not like making excuses, but sin happens because of a chain of events that have happened to us. We never do anything bad in a vacuum. Like the badness comes out of our fears and our needs and how we were raised and, and how we were hurt. And so all of that, that propels sin forward. Um, like hearing, I was just so struck by this man who without excuse, just, just, and without fear, apparently, while he's dying, just re repents, like in the, in the real sense of repentance, saying, I have done a wrong thing. I have no excuses. Here I am. And then how instantly Jesus responds to that, like instantly. There is no more conversation. There is no more. There's no back and forth thinking about all of Jesus' conversations on um, especially in Luke, like Luke and John have all these back and forths and back and forths. And in this instance, there's no conversation. A man repents and Jesus instantly says, today, right now, no delay. In this moment, we are not separated. You are now, you are with me. We are together because of that repentance. Um, and as someone who lives in fear of repentance often, who doesn't repent easily or quickly, that vision of a repentance without excuse that's met so immediately and completely by Christ, even while he's suffering, is, is comforting and hopeful. Yes, thank you for that. I think that's really helpful. And I think, you know, there's even a great, this great dichotomy of, you know, it's the, the, the thief who repents uh, the man who repents is is even going against like resisting a pile on right because like the first yes. guy is like look at you you like hack you like wanna be messiah like look what's happened to you yeah. and like it's very easy you know to get swept up in mm. yeah that guy's right and like yeah like this will give me a, a sweet moment of of levity and, and relief to, to to pile on but he actually you know he pushes against that um and in a sense you know is, is this kind of almost witness to what it is to to repent, to own, and 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 without knowing what Jesus' response is going to be—that's another thing. So, you know, you've got to say this guy's, you know, what has he seen of Jesus before this moment? You don't know necessarily what the response is going to be um, when you throw yourself, at, you know, out for mercy. But yeah, it's that 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 also struck me when you're thinking about the two there together. That's that is that is astonishing. I had not actually seen that before, but that is. I mean, that is the number one way that we avoid repenting, right? Is finding someone else to direct all of our anger and our shame 
at and if everyone else around us is also directing their anger and their shame at that it it becomes very easy to do that and to decide to to stop that deflection it's incredibly hard that is hard soul work yeah 100 <laughs> percent um I think about these words often also because, you know, this is, there's this reference to the, the two beside Jesus in other gospels. This is the first time we actually like, the, you know, if we think about it as a film where this scene is added to the mix, we don't just have it in the establishing wide shot. You actually punch in on it and see part of the exchange. Um, and a lot of people have made me know that there's something to be had by the fact that Jesus is not up there alone, uh, that, that mm. his death is not, you know, um, that if you pass by out of earshot on this day, uh, mm-hmm. Jesus' death looks like every other one up there. And the miraculous about it in just that in that first glance. Um, do you, do you make anything of that of Luke's inclusion of, of this actually as a scene? So not just the words mm-hmm. that Jesus is offering, but this this scene by which um, Jesus is among the common criminals, as, as it were. I think it it with Luke's emphasis on everyone that doesn't tend to have a voice um, like Luke's focus on women and people who are sick and marginalized people um, because that's who Luke wants to look at is Jesus with these people yeah um, and Jesus and and Luke including the criminal class as another marginalized class that most of us want to paint over there was Jesus with two thieves moving on but but Luke to be like, these are, these are also humans. These are also people that Christ came to interact with and be present to. There is no class of people that Christ is not fully present to at any point. Like there's no faceless, nameless people in Luke's gospel. That's probably hyperbole. I'm sure there are nameless, <laughs> nameless people. But in generally, like as, yeah, as, yeah. A, commi- as a general commitment, uh, Luke is so focused on giving people voices who society has not looked at and so focused on Christ interacting with them. So where, whoever you are, you can find someone like you that Christ has seen. I think that's, that's absolutely lovely. Yeah, a hundred percent. And, and in a way, it's not like saying that it's a, and in within all these classes of people, as it is within the religious, uh, you know, elite, as it is with these criminal class, there are those who see who Jesus is and, and engage what he has to offer and those who don't. Um, right. But that Jesus will respond well to whomever, uh, you know, reaches out in, 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 in faith and repentance, you know, centurions or, or criminals, there's this kind of that you, is, uh, the table is set kind of thing. Um, if you come uh, and, and yeah, I think that's, uh, that's yeah, a good. Well, and the, the peril, like the two thieves, like, like Luke isn't saying, Every thief is just great, and like, <laughs> yeah. just superb humans, just world class. Like Luke is like, there, there are so many ways, where, wherever you have found yourself in life, there are so many ways you can respond to Christ. And ev- no matter which station you are, if you turn to Christ, Christ is already there turning towards you. Mm. But no matter where you are, if you're turning away, you can turn away. Like that turning away is possible no matter how close to God you think you are um, based on your station or your occupation. Um. Yeah, yeah, no, I think that's really helpful. It's interesting so far, we haven't got into uh, any kind of semantics of what these words mean, right? Uh, <laughs> like we haven't got, you know, because people will go, oh, today, today you will yeah. be, aren't we all meant to yeah. rest until the, the, the yeah. general resurrection of the body? wait, didn't Jesus go to hell? Like, you know, when, when, when was this, you know, how was he going to be with this man? What's paradise? Um, you know, now, to some extent, is that the right move, right? Are these kind of semantics that kind of distract from the main point that basically Jesus meets this man in love and offers him a future? And exactly what that will look like is, is not for us and, you know, the line is maybe a pastoral line from Jesus in the moment that, that, that hints at a greater truth, but isn't exactly trying to literally um, right. explain what is, what is going to happen in the next 24 hours right. slash um, stretching to eternity. Uh, any thoughts on that? Um, I just listened to a great on Bean podcast today um, with a physicist who <laughs> spent a lot of time saying how time is made up. 
right. when time isn't real. Um, so it is I, that way I, at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I heard somebody on Twitter say that right now we, we should call it the little weekend and the big weekend. <laughs> like we exited the little yeah. weekend, now we're in the big weekend. I never thought my um, days of the week underwear, uh, days of the week underwear, would be so helpful. Uh, but times like these, they. <laughs> I have no, I have me. no idea what day it is. This is the first day in like three weeks I've put on a shirt with buttons. Like, I don't, I'm like how do I even put on buttons? Like what is a button? Um, you know, I think my my philosophy professors would be would be. Um, would be ashamed of me that I'm saying I don't think the semantics matter because I'm I'm I am a semantics person at heart. I I like I really like spending three hours with one verse and pulling it all apart and going down to the Aramaic and the Greek and the Hebrew and and I like that. Um, and I don't know if I don't want to do this with this passage. Just because I think it's if we did that, we'd come out with a bad theology. <laughs> um, because I, I don't think, you know, I think the broader theology of the New Testament and the Hebrew Bible leads to an idea of paradise or heaven that is not you die and go to heaven, but rather we sleep and then there is a kingdom of God that is remade that we are resurrected into. Um, and it doesn't seem like Jesus is saying that if we take him quite literally. And so I don't know if, if that's kind of a weakness of my own theology that I'm like, oh, we can't do semantics with this passage because if we do, I won't like the result. <laughs> you know, I think we're all, we're, all, we're all a little sloppy at some points with, mm. with, our, with our theology. But I do think there is something really important in pastoral being said here um, that perhaps could be lost if we spend too much time thinking about I don't, I don't know. I don't know if that's, yeah. if that's a supreme cop-out though. I, I do hate a cop-out. <laughs> uh, what are your, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, it's, I think probably like they, they like all the words have to be like, I, I think we definitely want to avoid thinking that Jesus is saying a very literal sentence here. I think for me, the key words, and it's not like that I came up with this. It's definitely a thought that others have had is the with me, right? Like, is mm. that like, it's not necessarily the, 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 the uh, the time or the location, but the presence of Christ, um, mm. which then goes that, like, okay, well, where is Christ right now? Is with them on this cross, mm. sharing their fate of people um, despised and 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 shunned and executed. Mm. Um, Christ is with them, uh, and in this act of you know what that's the whole God with us of the incarnation. Because Christ mm. is with them, Christ has also made the way for them to be with Him in a you know grand uh, more eternal more eschatological sense that that will um shine greater than all all, all present appearances so i th that's i think where i would kind of if i was right. tackling that I, you know I, I might you know you might explore that, that today as you kind of said earlier is indicating that from now right from now right. something dramatic has changed which even includes the last hours of this man's life a shift yeah. has occurred um a transformation in his in, in, in his relationship with the world and with God has occurred. And yeah, paradise, I think probably I would, you know, demythologize a little bit in here and explore this. It just me a shift is happening and something is promised. Um, but I think the with me is that, that basically Christ mm. has in this moment, like taken this man in uh, and, and they share the fate together that just as Jesus will die, just as this man will die, mm. Christ will rise and this man will rise. Um, and, and live in the embrace of God. I love that phrase, taking this man in. Mm. That's lovely. That is a lovely way to see that. Yeah, I think, I mean, if there's ever a, a time that we can think about, about witness in a broader sense than physical presence in a moment like this. It, yeah. Oh, are you still hearing me? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay, I just got an alert that my internet presence is unstable. <laughs> I don't know what that means, it sounds terrible. <laughs> Um, what, which it goes to show, you know, that yes. the idea of witness, like I, I, we're with each other in a meaningful mm. way, talking about things that matter, being present um, in a literal sense. We're not with each other at all, which the writers of the Gospels couldn't have even imagined yeah. anything like this. And so to think about witness mm. and to imagine that there is a type of witness that we also cannot imagine anything like to remember that 
Well, anytime you're talking about issues of like the kingdom of God or paradise, it's, it's all so, you can tell that I just went for a run today and listened to somebody talk about quantum for an hour. But <laughs> <laughs> like the, the, that even the things that we technically do understand about time and space and togetherness and, and how it's all unfolding, the things that scientists understand are still incomprehensible. And so when you think about the theology of the kingdom of God or paradise, what really matters is that in a way that we do not understand, we will be with God. Um, and that starts today, which is, I guess, if you think about like Richard Rohr, when Richard Rohr talks about um, heaven and hell, and he says, um, you know, heaven, you're, you're starting right now creating heaven or creating hell as you live your life. And so there's no being condemned to hell or being welcomed into heaven so much as your life is, is becoming hell as you live it, or your life is becoming heaven as you live it, further from God or towards God. And so if there's a sense of that with the today, you will be with me right now, paradise is starting as you move towards me. Yeah, no, I think that's, that's really helpful. And I think like it ties in a bit with what the gospel reading for this, for this Sunday, for Easter Sunday, where, you know, um, Jesus meets Mary in the garden and Mary wants to cling to him and, and Jesus is going to ascend, you know, don't, don't hold on to me. I've yet to ascend, but know that um, I am going to my God and your God, my father and your father, you know, that that, that there is this bringing into the household of God. Um, There is this presence, even though the physical body will go like Mary has to kind of comprehend and seemingly does very quickly um the that that the departing the the absence of this very physical tangible i can understand it and grasp it presence is going to be replaced by something mm. you know more elusive but but ultimately you know it seems that from the message of the gospel more powerful um uh you know kind of presence so i think that that it kind of touches in on that idea as well that, that john's going to play with in his resurrection narrative I love that connection. I love making that connection between the gospel text on Sunday and mm. yeah, the, the, the shifting of what presence means yeah, um, and how we understand presence. Mm. Again, very relevant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As you say, yeah, exactly. As we, as we think about community yeah. and friendship and family and, and, you know, yeah, life in this moment that, that there is a, a total, that, you know, the church hasn't ceased to be the church any, any because we can't come together on Sunday morning. Uh, the promises of Christ, the, the, the victory of the gospel hasn't been annulled because of this. Um, it simply has experienced a new. Hmm. Just well, adjusting. The adjustment yeah. period's no fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, indeed. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, in, uh, and I think that's, you know, you can even, as you continue to look at the Gospels, you know, even after they've had this Easter experience, we still cut to Acts where they're, you know, until the Spirit comes, we're all still just huddled in a room. <laughs> it's like, wait a second, didn't, it's like that moment we like, to, you know, you're going from episode to episode, it's like, wait, didn't they just have like this whole experience? Did I miss something which sent them And then even the after the Holy Spirit comes, then all of a sudden, Peter's like, guys, I totally think we should be circumcised again. <laughs> like that reminder, like the, the yeah. church has, there's no like, perfect time when we go back and we're like wow this is when the church was <laughs> very holy but no like yeah. everyone was just a disaster and trying to figure out what all of this meant and if they should yeah. focus on the semantics or not and mm. and just as we do that christ turns towards us always 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 that's great that's a great last word to end on Laura Jean Truman, thank you for coming on this episode. Thank you for helping to illuminate these words for me and hopefully for others, I'm sure for others. Uh, if people have you know, liked what you're saying, you write often at your uh, website, laurajeantruman.com. Uh, you've been doing a lot of blogging across Lent, so if people don't feel like they're quite ready to leave that space because of everything that's going on, uh, there's lots they can catch up on. Any, anything else you want to draw people's attention to? Um, I I don't think so. Yeah, I'm mostly I'm mostly over on Instagram and Twitter these days right now. My my blog during the coronavirus has been a little has been sleeping. It is not dead, it is sleeping. Yeah. Um, but, yes, but I'm also it. Laura Jean Truman at on Twitter and Instagram as well. 
yeah, a lot of those those Lenten thoughts and other and other thoughts over there. So people should check it out your work. And uh, thank you for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. This was such a joy.